Hi folks, it's been a while since I've been out here. Every once in a while, I just unplug from the bench, do something else, um, come back to it fresh. It's, I tend to go to th into things um, with both feet, get way deep involved, and every once in a while I just gotta pull away and go, okay, there's other things that happen in the world besides right here at this bench. So I'm ready to get back into it. My wife had to go out of town for a few weeks, so now I got nothing but time. So after work, I'm gonna probably be out here every night while the rest of the house falls to pieces and the pets all starve to death. Okay, not that bad in any event. I have here a Sansui 9090DB. Now, the owner contacted me and I was interested in taking this in after I discovered that he's the original owner of this Sansui. And I, I thought it was completely unmolested, but he did say he had it repaired once. And when I gave it the once over before trying to power it up, I did see in the back there are, it apparently blew a channel because it's got four new output transistors, four on semi MJ series. So um, I'm not sure what's going on with it yet. I did fire it up on the dim bulb tester after getting the cover off of it and making sure that nothing had gotten jostled loose during shipping. Um, there's a screw in here somewhere. I think it's in the front panel. Uh, that's not the problem. The problem is it won't come out of protection and it's doing, uh, it's pulsating the dim bulb. So we're gonna take a look at this and see what's going on. But meanwhile, I'm gonna fire this up so you can see what the dim bulb tester is doing. You take a look at that. We flip it on. And it's doing that. Not sure what's going on, so we're just gonna have to figure this out. I've worked on a few of these. I've done several 9090s. Um, I think I saw an 8080, and this is the 9090 DB with the Dolby. Um, but the one thing they all have in common is you can pull this driver board out. It's modular, it's very easy to get to, very easy to service. Not so easy to take voltage measurements while it's working, but we're gonna pull it out and see what that does for our dim bulb. Most times when you pull the driver board out, the amplifier or receiver will come out of protection. All you have to do to get this out is to take two screws that hold the shield in, and you can just pop the board right out, pull pull the power cord out and that's it. So we're gonna do that and see what we get. Okay, so I've got the driver board out of here now and that's this guy right here. And now if we turn it on, you watch the protect light, it'll go from red, flashing red to solid green. Okay, so we most likely have a blown channel. I'm gonna have to check the output transistors and then as always, we have to work our way back through the driver board. And the best practice is to print out that section of the schematic and then you can trace the path of destruction and see where it stops. Okay, so I'm back out here looking at this thing and uh, Here's what I'm doing. Right now, I am measuring across one of the emitter resistors on one of the channels. So I've got my meter here in millivolts, and I'm going across this resistor. Now, to make sure you got a good connection across it, you can just go right to ohms. You can see it's half an ohm. These are 0.33, and with the lead resistance, that's about right. So we know we're connected right across there. So I turn it on, you're gonna see the millivolts go up and down dramatically but one channel seems to be a lot worse than the other and I don't know if it's drawing so much current that it's screwing up the other channel but anyway take a look at this now dim bulb is getting brighter and dimmer and this is going anywhere between 50 and 0 I'm gonna hit the min max okay so I'll turn that off and now we went from negative 26 to zero. In our now I'm gonna go look at the other channel. So we pull this off. Gonna clear the min max. I'm gonna go to the resistor all the way on the other side. And I'm not worried about polarity, I'm more worried about absolute value, so I don't care which way I have the leads configured. But you'll see this one 
has a lot more of a dramatic change. If you look here, we're going from zero, 280. So yeah, whatever's going on seems to be affecting this channel far more than this one. So, um, these I believe are the transistors that were changed out in the previous repair. So I'm probably just gonna pull the outputs off of here and check them. I checked everything in place and I didn't find anything shorted. And if it was shorted, it wouldn't be doing this. Something is causing it to draw too much current and then fold back and draw more and go back. It's very slow. I guess you could call it an oscillation, but uh, I don't think it's actually caused by oscillation. Right now, I'm really not sure what's going on. These are the kind of troubles I love after I figured them out. Okay, so I've got the uh, heat sink assembly off. And you can see these are the old original transistors, and here are the ones that were replaced. These are on semis. These were a good choice to replace these, uh, and it looks like they've written something on each one which it looks like gain characteristics, which is also a good thing because it means whoever did this knew what they were doing and gain match these because you don't want to have unmatched transistors when you have more than one pair like this. So um, I'm going to pull out these new ones here and then we're going to see if it still does the same thing when we fire it up. All right, so... I started uh, thinking about this last night and this morning over my coffee. I decided to see if there was a, um, a theory of operation in the service manual, and there's not, but there is a block diagram. So here's what I'm thinking. This is a pretty conventional output stage. We have our double or triple Darlington outputs. I think it's triple. Basically, if you look here, the emitter of this transistor feeds into the base of this one and the collectors are pretty much tied together. I think this is about a 10 ohm resistor. So um, they consider this to be like a Darlington configuration. So these are our drivers, these are our outputs, and this is our bias transistor here. Now, I believe this is a constant current source. It's kind of been a weird place. We usually see a constant current source in the tied emitters of our long-tailed or differential input pair. Um, but anyway, here's our bias adjustment, this is our bias transistor, you can see the emitter feeds the base of the PNP and the collector feeds the base of the NPN. So these guys, I've seen uh, configurations like this in Maranch units, but the, the block diagram will give us a lot better clue as to what everything here does. And this is the block diagram, and this is our current limiter. What I believe is happening is that we have what would be runaway bias. And when it reaches a certain point, I believe the current limiter is shutting it down. And when it reaches a certain point, it releases it and the cycle begins again. That's the theory I'm going on. So we're gonna start taking a look at our bias transistor first and foremost, our constant current source, which feeds into here. And to a lesser extent, the drivers. I think the drivers are probably good. So I'm going to focus my attentions here, here, and here. Hi folks, back at this Sansui 9090DB. And I ran into a problem because when I began to examine the uh, driver board, which is the F2624 board in this receiver, uh, I discovered that it didn't match the schematic I had. So back to the internet i started poking around and i discovered that sansui never released the correct schematic the one in the manual is obviously from an earlier version and they have they had since modified the board and this is pretty common in audio equipment they didn't release another schematic and that's when i tripped across a site called Tolly tolliesdiy.com. <clears throat> it's run by a gentleman, I hope I don't mispronounce his name, it's Anatoly Mordecai. And like me, he's into audio and test equipment, but unlike me, he's the design guy, an engineer. I'm lucky if I could just fix this stuff. And what he did, since no schematic was available, was he did what many people do, and he just drew it out and then created a file. And um, 
generously in the true spirit of DIY, put it out on the internet for people like me to use to service. And we'll take a look at this and I'll show you what the differences are. But he took it a step further and he actually created a drop-in replacement board using modern components. Um, check out his site. I'm going to put the URL at the bottom of the screen here so you can check it out. I'll probably also put it on the front of this. Uh, Tolly, thank you so much for the, your generosity in posting this. I was pulling my hair out. You can see it's significantly shorter than when I started out. But um, having that schematic made all the difference. So here's the first problem I found while trying to trace through here and discover what the problem was. I wanted to look at the bias circuit. And on the schematic, you can see this is our bias adjustment pot right here. And this is our bias transistor. The emitter goes and feeds the base of the driver here. The collector feeds the base of the driver here. This in turn drives, and I have the correct schematic now. You can see there's two transistors. <clears throat> this, we're just looking at one channel. So there's basically two pair. We have two NPNs, we have two PNPs. Uh, the voltages are slightly different on the correct schematic as well, but the big problem is when we look here, this transistor is not on this board. Instead of this transistor, we have these thermal tracking diodes down here. And I'll put a picture up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. These leads go into where the emitter and base goes into here and once I realized that this wasn't matching and tried to find another, I found Tolly's schematic. And now it started to make more sense. But if you look here, here's our tracking diodes. This is both channels. So we have here and here. I'm going to put up a schematic that I printed out of the one channel I was working on. I uh, made some notes on it. Please disregard them. Uh, some of these voltages were taken on the dim bulb tester, some weren't. <clears throat> so here you go. Here's our bias tracking diode. And here's our adjustment pot. So this is our bias circuit. And this is where I found the problem. This is supposed to be a 100 ohm trimmer. So let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so this is one of the pots I took off the board. This does not look like a stock pot. All four of them have been changed for both channels, bias and offset. And when I test this one, take a look at what it reads. This is, remember, supposed to be a 100 ohm, and it's stamped 101, which is shorthand for 100 ohms. So it's 10. And the digit one indicates how many zeros you add after that, which indicates that this is a 100 ohm pot. However, when I measure it, you can see it's over 700 ohms. And this is what was causing our bias problem. Because that is our trimmer right here. It's supposed to be at 100 ohms. It's reading seven times what it should. Um, <clears throat> often, when you have output transistor short it cascades back and it can take out and actually open up your trimmer uh, in this case it didn't there's a possibility that these are not a uh, high enough wattage to handle the current in this application anyway I put one in it's not the exact same one the value is correct the form factor is not so if you look here we have our bias offset, offset, and this is the bias pot for this channel. I, as I said, I just put it in. I have to replace all these anyway. The gentleman that sent it to me wanted a complete rebuild, but you always, always repair an item first before you rebuild it. If you try to just rebuild it, you may get lucky and fix your problem, but more often than not, you may compound your issues and make troubleshooting it that much more difficult. Because remember, whenever you're doing a rebuild, you may inadvertently cause a problem. Now you have two problems. They may not be related. It may drive you insane. So always repair an item first. Then you can rebuild it and rebuild it a board or a section at a time and test it that way if you run into a problem it's confined to the last area you worked on so anyway <clears throat> i replaced this 
and we're going to take a look at it and see what we get. One point I want to make before we start testing this is that if you unplug this board, you have to be very careful when you plug it back in because the connector is not keyed. You can easily seat it a pin off, sending voltages where they shouldn't go. So be very careful if you unplug this board to reseat it correctly. And all you have to do is pay attention, something unfortunately I'm guilty of not doing. So anyway, we have the board back in, it is connected correctly, and we are going to fire this thing up now. Now, when you're doing testing like this, it's very important to take it off of the dim bulb tester, because if you're starving it for current, you're never going to get any output. Okay, so I'm going to flip it on now, and it just clicked out of protection, and we have signal on both channels. Remember that clipping you're seeing is just the auto ranging in my analyzer. And there we go. We have well over 100 watts a channel. We have 124 and 114. It's not unusual to have mismatches, volume control tracking, um, various reasons. I'm going to turn it back down. I do not have the heat sink on this unit, so we don't want to run it for an extended period of time, but there's nothing wrong with doing a short test because the back itself is also part of the heat sink. So anyway, now this unit has been repaired and it's making full power on both channels. Now we can begin the rebuild process. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of the rebuilding on camera because it's been my experience that I don't do my best work when I'm distracted by the camera, but I will go over everything I've done, why I did what I did, and we'll uh, do it pretty much like the uh, Sansui AU11000 I did. Okay, so I think we're going to stop this video now. Let me shut the noisemakers off. And, uh, oh, by the way, Looking down in here, you can see the types of pots that Sansui tends to use. These are what you would normally see on the output board. You see this blue adjusting pot and this white one? These guys right here, let me move this wire in case it's in the way. Oh my God. These are the pots I expected to see. So those definitely aren't stock on the board here. And they are going to be all changed out to a different form factor. Uh, the cover that goes over this board has four holes above each one of these. And you're supposed to adjust them from the top. So that's one way we know that the form factor is wrong. So we're going to get the right pots to go in here. We're going to change out all the electrolytics. We're going <clears> to <throat> change out any transistors that may be on the known bad actor list. And uh, after that, we will go through here and we will see how this unit sounds. Okay, anyhow, uh, thank you for watching this video. As always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so, so much. And uh, thank you all for watching.